Mmm. Homemade, fresh baked brownies. How many of you guys want some fresh baked brownies? Raise your hand. If I were in the room right now, you take it. Raise your hand. Oh, they're so delicious. All right, though, here's one thing. These are a special recipe brownie. I've added my own little touch to this. I put a sprinkling, not a lot, just a little sprinkling of dog poop. I hope I'm allowed to say poop in church because I just did. But yeah, there's just a little bit of dog poop. How many of you still would eat this brownie? Uh, not a lot of you. Now, there's just a little bit of dog poop. Here's the thing. Just a little bit of dirt, just a little bit of poop can actually ruin the whole thing. Well, let's see what this all has to do with this week's episode of The Puzzle. Wait, don't come in. There's something wrong. What? I think the floor is broken. Why aren't there any lights? What's the problem? I don't know. I can't see anything. I mean, we, we won't be able to solve the puzzle if we can't see anything. Calm down. We need to make the best of it. I think this is the result of foul play. Or it's all part of the puzzle. <laughs> What? So you're telling me that this is the puzzle? Well, I told you it was going to be more challenging. Now, here are the rules. Rule one, no outside help. That means no cell phones. Rule two, follow my instructions. They will tell you where to go and what you need to do. And rule three, keep everything in order. No skipping and no moving ahead. Miss Weaver, are we getting more time for this one because of the extra obstacle? No, and when you find the book title, go and put it in the computer. But that's impossible, I can't even see. Oh. That reminds me, here's your clue. Only those who are pure will see what they need to do. What? Good luck. <laughs> she can't make this any easier for us, could she? Well, there is a reason no one ever wins. And there is a reason why I am losing my mind. So. Oh, I think we just experienced a miracle. How did the lights turn on? Because I just turned them on. Oh. Oh, that helps so much. Oh my goodness, I can, I can, I can finally see. Well, I spoke too soon. We are never going to be able to find anything in this mess in here, so. Okay, we just need to remember Miss Weaver's clue. Only those who are pure will see. Yeah. It's like a riddle. Because it is a riddle. Oh, uh, makes sense. So. I think we need to open this. We're going to need a key. A key? Are you serious? That's so small. I mean, we're never gonna find that in here. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. Guess it's time to do some cleaning. No, we don't have time to clean. The clock is ticking. If we don't clean up, we won't find anything. But if we don't find the key, a dirty room isn't gonna matter either, so. Do what you want. I'm cleaning. I don't think this was here before. Cooper, stop focusing on what's not there. We need to find the key in here. Riley, what if this leads somewhere? This is very interesting. This picture, it's of the room from last week. Oh, you're right. Miss Weaver's way too sneaky. It's almost as if she's telling us what to do. What was that second rule? Follow my instructions. This picture. I told you cleaning was important. Okay, fine. Well, what do we need to clean next, then? I think we need to put the bookshelf back. It's just another picture, dude. Miss Weaver keeps playing games with us. This is actually a game. Well, at least we know what to fix next. The bookshelf. Let's put the books back on the shelf. Nothing gets by you, Sherlock. 
Yeah. Well, we better hurry up because the clock is still ticking. Well, that took longer than I expected. We're missing a book. Is it How to Make a Student Go Insane in Six Easy Steps by Miss Weaver? <laughs> because she is this close. Oh, maybe. Now, what book could we be missing? She's giving us a pattern. The more we clean, the more we can see what we need to do. Snowflake. You have come so far, but you have only cleaned the outside. You need to clean the inside. I swear, she just has us doing chores, so. Okay, we need to complain less and clean more. Complain less and clean more. Well put. So, um, what do you want to clean next? Well, looks like you better get digging. This is the missing book. The key. <laughs> we have to find the other key. I give up. Guys, time's almost up. We gotta hurry. Okay, okay, okay. We've searched everywhere. There's nowhere else to look. Has to be something we missed. The clock seems to be moving much faster now that it's closer to zero. Hey, this corner isn't clean. Greg Aspie. <laughs> oh, nice job, everyone. I am impressed. And with one second left on the clock, oh, that was pretty close. Oh, you're telling me. <laughs> Miss Weaver, I don't get it. I mean, all we did was clean a room. Oh, you did more than that. Yeah, I still don't get it. I think I do. The more we cleaned out the room, the more we were able to see. Yeah, and every time we cleaned, I mean, it made it that much easier to find the next clue. Yes, cleaning up made for positive action. I still kind of think you were trying to tell me to clean my locker, though. No, no, just one step at a time, Riley. <laughs> oh, sure. I think I see something. I miss this. Oh, no, you didn't. You just found the clue to the next challenge. We seriously just finished this one. <laughs> there uh, doesn't seem to be a way to open this. That's what you're going to find out next time. So obviously today, we're talking about going and cleaning up. So here's your challenge today. Go home and clean up your room, okay? That's your challenge. I'm just kidding. That's not what we're talking about today. But I bet your parents wish we were. But like we saw in this episode, the students had to clean up the things around them. They had to clean up the things on the inside and the outside in order for their clues to be revealed. What we're talking about today is purity. And this word is a kind of big word, but what purity means is to be clean on the inside, so much so that it produces outward actions. Purity means to be clean in the way that we think, in the things that we see, in what we say, and the things that we hear. That's what purity is all about. Just like in this episode we saw today, the more we're able to clean things up inside and around our lives, the more we'll be able to know and do what's right. 
Look at what it says in the Bible. In Matthew 23, 25 through 26, it says, You are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy. First wash the inside of the cup and the dish, then the outside will become clean. Basically what this verse is saying is don't just pretend to have it all together. Actually focus on the inside and work on the inside so that it will produce outward actions. So what does it look like to have purity in your life? Maybe for you, it's inside you're maybe getting angry, but you're going to choose to stop and clean that up. And you're going to go, you know what, I'm not going to get angry at this situation. I'm going to choose to handle it in the right way. Maybe for some of you, you hear all your friends swearing, but you're going to choose to have the purity in the things that you say, so you don't say those bad words. Maybe it's not looking at things or watching TV shows or movies that you know aren't going to do anything good for your life. So what are those areas of purity in your life? What are the things you need to focus on that you know God is calling you to, to work on, to clean up in your lives? So my prayer for you is this, that you will discover what purity looks like for your life that you'll begin to clean those things up on the inside so that you will live out and have those outward actions of the things that God has intended for your life.